No, <laughs> actually, he, he played crowbar and shoot. <laughs> yeah, the, the breakdown in in uh, uh, the one that you hated. Yes. Uh, after the solo section, there's a breakdown, and uh, Jacob said, "I want it to sound like metal crashing," and we couldn't really find a sample that we were happy with. So Stephen and I were in the back of Jeff's house, just looking for shit to bang on. And uh, we found a shovel and a crowbar, so we brought it in the studio. And there's even pictures of Stephen banging on this shovel. Yep. We, we, now, at the end, when we turned it in to, to Jay to mix, he was like, that doesn't really sound good. So I think it was Jay that decided not to, to use it, if, if my memory serves me. Yeah, but there's. So we didn't. song was actually written in that pool house right there um, very early in the morning and then uh, in a couple of hours and then we went right in there in that house into uh, Lonnie's office and recorded it in another couple of hours then we went and picked up Steven and played it for played him it on for the him. way to the studio to record a different song and yeah. he loved it Jeff loved it when we played it for him so the following day I think we started on it yeah and, and we always knew that uh, that we wanted Slash to play on the record. And of course, you know, Steven and Slash have been best friends since, you know, forever, since, you know, middle school or whatever. And it made sense to us to get Slash to play on a ballad because, you know, those memorable melodies, the ones that just stick in your head are the, are the ballads, November Rain, Sweet Child of Mine. Those are the ones that, to me, are his signature just songs, you know, the guitar licks, guitar leads, and um, so we were blown away, you know, obviously me and this guy here, you know, when he walked in the studio, having two guys from Guns N' Roses and, and <laughs> Jeff Pilson, and, you know, it was just, uh, it, it, it was pretty insane. The funny story is that, uh, that we've told a couple of times, but true story, we were having a little get together over at Jeff Pilson's house, and Slash showed up a little bit late. And what had happened is he had went to the wrong house at like, what was it, like midnight or 10 o'clock at night? Maybe it was 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, around 10, I think. So he goes to uh, the house down the road and he pulls up and knocks on the door. The neighbor opens the door and does a double take, you know. I was like, and uh, Slash is like, I'm here for the party. And the guy's like, honey, Slash is at the door. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Slash like, maybe I've got the wrong place. So, um, yeah, he showed up a little bit later. And, told us the story of going to Jeff's neighbor's house, <laughs> but I would have loved to have, you know, had a video camera rolling and seen the reaction. I'm the one that you hate. I was at a Christmas party with Jeff, and uh, at the time that we had met Jacob and... Uh, Everything revolves around parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Memorials and parties, that's where we all met, yeah. But anyway, um, so I, I, I originally just asked um, Jeff to play bass on a couple songs, just until we found our sound, and of course, yes. Um, and of course he was excited to do, to do so, and uh, a few days later he said, do you guys have a studio picked out? And I said, no, not really. I'm, I'm doing some shopping right now. I'm, I'm looking at a place in Burbank and a few other spots. And he said, well, why don't you come to the house and we record here at my house because I have a home studio. And so we ended up uh, recording the first song there and had such a great time. We said, this is, this is the formula. So we just did the whole record there. Uh, Jeff produced and played bass. And um, then after the record was done, our friend Jay Rustin that uh, introduced us, he mixed the record. Yeah, he co-wrote two songs with us, okay. um, a song called Another Version of the Truth, mm -hmm. and then the title track, Back from the Dead. Right. Very cool. Now, and he was pretty instrumental in, in all the songs. I mean, absolutely. Great, great songwriter, great producer. Even the, um, the melodies and guitar parts that we had, he would make suggestions just like any great producer would do, um, but I would put him up there with the best of them. Yeah, he, he's fantastic for sure. That that was the first song that uh, Lonnie actually sent to me. Um, Lonnie wrote that song, and um, you know, it basically is Stephen's story. It was one of the first songs that we recorded as well, and um, I think that song really hits home to Stephen. Um, you know, it's uh, 
if like I said, it's his story. But um, going into the record, you know, approaching the lyrics and everything, it's, it's, you know, we didn't want to just do another rock and roll cliche album, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, woohoo, let's party, you know, there's, there's, all that's great, but there's more to life than that. And more, uh, I guess we had something to say. A lot of times when you write the songs that are just the party songs or whatever, you're not really saying anything, you're just kind of, you know, yeah, just kind of having a good time or whatever. I guess we had, you know, something to say. I know Steven definitely portrayed that to us, that, you know, guys, this is the first full-length record I've done since Appetite for Destruction in 25 years, and this is very important to me, you know, and, and, and we got that, you know.